Star. I'm Adam Casel, the Discipleship Pastor at North Star. To kick off 2018, we are doing a vision series titled Dangerous Invitation. As part of this series, we are inviting the North Star family to join us in a corporate fast. We wanted to put together a brief video to talk about what fasting is and why it's so important. Now, the main reason for the corporate fast over these next four weeks, every Tuesday from January 16th through February 6th, is because we have a big initiative for 2018. That is to raise $300,000 to fund uh, the building of, a, of staff housing for back-to-back -back in Haiti. We have a generous body, and we are excited about this opportunity. This will not happen by human efforts alone, and we need to, the Lord to work in a unique way to accomplish this goal. Now, one of the most commonly known and least practiced exercises in the Christian faith, at least in the U.S., is fasting. Really, who wants to deprive oneself of food? Yet we are inviting the North Star family to, to fast corporately. So what's the purpose of fasting? Before answering that question, I want to briefly provide biblical support for why we fast. Quite simply, we see it modeled over and over in the scriptures from Moses to David to the prophets to Jesus and the apostles. It was such a common practice during Jesus' earthly ministry that on the Sermon on the Mount, he had to point out the hypocrisy of his contemporaries to tell his disciples not to fast like them, but fast in such a way that no one would know that you're fasting. We see that in Matthew 6, 16 to 18. It is never once a command from God, and Jesus doesn't command it, but he assumes that people will fast as a part of living life under the care and guidance of God. That's why Jesus says, when you fast. So what does fasting accomplish that it was such a common practice all through the biblical times and has remained a crucial part of living in God's kingdom for the church? First of all, let me say what it doesn't do. It doesn't curry favor with God so that he'll do what we're asking. It doesn't make God pay more attention to us as if he says to himself, wow, Adam's fasting about this issue. He's really serious about it. In and of itself, fasting does not make our prayers more powerful either. The, re the reason we usually make the connection to fasting that I just mentioned is because significant events usually precede or accompany fasting in the Bible or in our own lives. For example, Moses receiving the law, David pleading for the life of his son, Jesus before he started his ministry, or a desire for breakthrough or miracle in our own lives. However, the purpose of fasting is for training. We are training our body that it is not our master, but it is our servant. We have one Lord and our body is not him. The hunger pangs that we experience make us think that we're going to die. We have to decide, do I believe Deuteronomy and Jesus that I don't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God? Where does my true sustenance come from? As I said, this is training, so if you've never done it before, it's going to be hard. You'll find that all that people talk about is food. Every commercial is about food. Someone on the day that you are fasting will inevitably bring in the most amazing dish to work to share. And every bit of food you smell and see has never smelled or looked so good. There will be many battles and opportunities to tell our body, you will not die, you are being sustained by God. The good things of his kingdom are better than the best food right now. In that way, the hunger pangs stop being a distraction and start becoming a reminder to pray. When we feel or hear a rumble in our stomach, we say, Father, thank you for the ability to feel hunger and please provide the funds for the staff housing in Haiti. To conclude, I wanna give just a few practical tips for these next few weeks. First of all, if you are pregnant, 
nursing or have medical a medical reason that prevents you from fasting, do not fast. Find something else that you spend time doing, um, like fasting from media or entertainment. Trust me, it'll have the same effect as food. If you've never fasted before, you can ease your way into it by refraining from snacks between meals, um, between now and, and that first Tuesday of the fast. It's like building up your mileage when training for a race. I'd recommend skipping breakfast for your first meal of the day, or the first meal of the day, uh, since some of you probably already skipped breakfast already. And see how far you can make it. Water is your friend to help calm the rumbling. <clears throat> since you're skipping a meal, you, you'll have more time in your day. Use this time to read a passage, pray, meditate, which just means to think about a passage over and over. You can pray for whoever is speaking that week, ask God to, to raise money for the building initiative, and spend time with the Holy Spirit asking, why does food have such a grip on your heart? What are we believing or not believing about reality that makes us think food is ultimate? Now, we're so excited to see what the Lord does through this time of corporate fasting. Thank you for joining us, and please share whatever Kairos moments you have during this time. So as you fast, may you feast on the presence of God and his kingdom that you may taste and see that the Lord is good.